first month of the 2016 fiscal year. The Delaware Economic and Financial Advisory Council had a big say in how that budget came together. This month, Dace Blaskovitz talks with the head of DFAC, Josh Martin. Here is Dace on business. Josh Martin, what is DFAC? Well, Dace, thanks for having me on today. DFAC is the Delaware Economic and Financial Advisory Council. We are charged by executive order from the governor with overseeing the state's financial situation. We look at things like tax policy, budget numbers, uh, you, you name it. We are required to forecast revenues and expenditures for the state of Delaware. Although independent, DFAC still very much influences the political process. Talk to that. Well, first of all, DFAC is composed of about 33 people right now from the public and private sector, mm -hmm. as well as academia. But we've got a lot of very smart people on DFAC, including some legislators from both parties. This is separate from the political process because we are purely looking at forecasting the numbers. Then we give those numbers to the governor and the General Assembly and they make those decisions on the budget and what have you. I will tell you that Wall Street, and I'm talking about in particular the major rating agencies, view this as a best practice because the DFAC function is totally separate from the political process. The political process occurs after we generate our numbers and give those numbers to the governor and the General Assembly. So as we sit here in mid-July 2015, what do those DFAC numbers suggest and or suggest to you? Well, let me just take a look at my notes here. One of the things these numbers suggest is going forward, we've got some challenges uh, in terms of things that we're going to have to do in terms of the Delaware economy. For example, our revenue projections for the next fiscal year are scheduled to only grow at a tenth of a percent over the current fiscal year. This means that decisions in Dover are going to be much tougher next year than they've been in the past. And let's do a follow-up. Perhaps you already did it, but I'll put yeah. you on the spot. With that unique perspective of being chair, mm -hmm. give us one tidbit of good news and perhaps one tidbit of concern. Well, one bit of good news is that the personal income tax revenue category. Our personal income tax revenues are scheduled to grow by 4.1% in the current fiscal year. That's 2016. And next year, we forecast 4.6%. That is a good news, and it's an indicator of the strength of job growth in the state of Delaware. One concern that we have would be the fact that 56%, that's over half, of the elements of our revenue portfolio are inelastic. What I mean by inelastic, and I'm thinking about things like lottery and abandoned property, these revenue sources are not growing in comparison to the economic growth that we're seeing. And this is particularly troublesome. If you look at a graph of uh, personal income versus expenditures, you see some divergence going out into the future. And this gives us a real matter of concern, and this is going to be an issue for the governor and the General Assembly. Let me put you on the spot. If I read the DFAC mandate correctly, over, you're supposed to have oversight of both the spending and revenues. So what do you say to people like me that have become critical of DFAC saying, when I go through those minutes, I don't see the outrage on spending, the concern on spending. Josh Martin, what do you say to the spending side? Well, let me start my answer to that question by saying spending is really a policy issue that's left to our elected officials, in this case the governor mm -hmm. and the uh, General Assembly. But you should know that DFAC does look at expenditures as well as revenues. Notwithstanding the amount of ink that's devoted to both of those in the minutes, you should know that we meet six times a year. We have two subcommittees, an expenditure subcommittee that looks at spending and a revenue subcommittee. That expenditure subcommittee, head by, headed by Ed Ratledge from the University of Delaware, takes a deep look at what our spending is for that current year. Granted, you see a lot of focus on revenues, but we understand the mandate to look at expenditures as well as revenues. Last question. I'm pushing aside 30 plus years of friendship with you just a minute. I'm going to run some numbers by here just a minute. The, let's see, over the last 10 years, the state of Delaware's general fund spending has risen 50%, debt spending has increased 80%, and annual state debt service has increased 70%. At the same time, total employment is up maybe 3%, personal income adjusted for inflation is up maybe 5%, and real total Delaware output has gained only 2%. Josh Martin, I'm a big fan, but with all due respect, 
that's not politics, that's not, that's instead math, that's not sustainable. What do you say? Well, Dace, I had a feeling you might go there, so I generated some <laughs> numbers myself. Uh, admittedly, general fund spending is up, I show 49% in the past 10 years. But if you, adjust, if you adjust that for inflation, we're talking about spending only being up 7% in that period. Look at employment growth. Uh, it's only 3% since, since 2004, but this ignores the uh, recession that occurred between FY09 and FY11. The uh, employment growth uh, since the first quarter of 2010, it's been 8%. So that's a much better situation. Real income data suggests that personal income has grown 10% in Delaware since 2005. So it, admittedly, personal income growth has, has been a little slow since the, the, the trough of the uh, recession, but I think that the real growth in Delaware started to look up. Now, you mentioned uh, debt spending. If you measure that by debt issuance, it has risen 78% between 2005 and 2014. I agree with that. But on an inflation-adjusted basis, the rate of growth is 36%. But what does all of this mean? This is exactly the basis for why Governor Markell appointed an advisory committee on revenues for us to take a deep look at the uh, structure of all of the revenues uh, in the state. We have a lot of inelasticity and elements of our revenue portfolio, a lot of volatility, and we still want to, want to remain competitive with our neighboring states. We issued that report in May. Unfortunately, the General Assembly didn't implement a lot of those records recommendations, but we think there's the kind of structure there which, if implemented, can really put the state of Delaware, Delaware on a better footing in terms of, of revenues. As far as expenditures are concerned, I understand that the General Assembly has hired a consultant. They will be providing a report on spending, and we, too, look forward to reading the results of that report and the recommendations. Josh Martin, Chair of DFAC, thank you. Thanks, Dace.